Today I'll be doing another 10 minute product design portfolio review. With these, I always try to be as honest as I can to kind of show you what hiring managers will notice and not notice when they are reviewing a portfolio. The details can really, really matter, especially if they're looking at hundreds of portfolios at a time. And so here are my detailed thoughts of this portfolio. I really love the header area of this portfolio. I think it's honestly a breath of fresh air. It doesn't seem like this designer took a template and put text within a template. They really put a lot of heart into what they made and they created these custom illustrations for the header area that showcase a lot of personality. However, it is a little bit crowded up here and I have some little suggestions for how to make this area feel like there's a little bit more breathing room. A lot of times when you have a very complicated design like this, it can get overwhelming for someone who's viewing it and adding some elements of minimalism and simplicity can go a long way. Whenever there's a semi-complex design with a lot of ideas and a lot of things going on, I always recommend adding more breathing room between elements so that they can have more space to stand out and don't feel as crowded with the other elements on the page. So this is what it looks like right now. And if I were to add a little bit more spacing, it might look something like this. And so notice how there's a little bit more spacing and now things feel like they have more space to breathe. This is super nitpicky, but honestly, it might bother a designer who's reviewing the portfolio. There's an extra space right here. I would never reject over an extra space, but it is something that I noticed. So definitely a small thing you can fix. I personally do like this section up here. I think it's a great summary of what you've done in the past and helps me figure out what your background looks like. And so having these logos here is a really quick way for me to understand what you've done before without having to read anything. Let's talk about the My Design Headspace section. I do really like this. I think this is really great. It showcases what you care about as a designer. Plus the illustrations are really cute and I love how they're animating. And it definitely again shows that you put a lot of care into your portfolio. One thing I did notice is that when I click on these, it changes the color palette of the page, which is a really nice detail. However, if you are going to do this, I would highly recommend also changing the color of these logos because it kind of ruins the style when not everything changes. And so definitely make sure that everything changes. The other thing I noticed is that the color change with the last section here, I feel like is not high enough, if that makes sense. So it looks like it kind of goes back to that same blue color, even though it's like slightly different probably recommend introducing like a green color so that the color changes are a little bit more visible or maybe the last one changes everything into dark mode. Not sure, but maybe something to experiment with. I'm gonna skip over the selected projects for now because I have a lot of comments about this section specifically. I'm gonna talk first about the more about me section. This is a great summary of you and um, really love the layout here as well. One thing I'd recommend that's also very nitpicky is to not make these icons transparent. They kind of feel like they're like receding into the background. I think you can use full opacity and it'll look really great. So full opacity would look something like this. Okay, so the case study section, I think this is the part that needs the most improvement on your portfolio homepage. Specifically, these thumbnails, I think might be the biggest problem. So the screenshots right now make each of the projects feel dated, even though they are not that dated. The stock photo background and the use of the devices, I think, and the way that they're cropped might be contributing the most to the feeling. And so I'd recommend iterating on this more. There are a few different options here. You can either remove these completely and focus only on the text and make it a text only kind of like homepage portfolio. That's pretty trendy right now. You can also make the thumbnails wider so that they're closer to like a four to three or three to two image ratio. This will allow you to focus more on the interface and not have to crop things at a weird angle. I would also recommend removing the stock photos and going with a color maybe from up here. You can even try creating like a pixel art background for your designs. But the main things are to remove all these additional elements and simplify it so that you're focusing more on the elements in here. I think right now there's too much going on in most of these. And what I really want to see is the designs here in a non-cropped state. Before we dive into one of the case studies, I do want to mention that these icons here feel really random. First of all, they are not consistent in style because they have different stroke widths across all the icons. They're also kind of blurry. Like if I zoom in here, this one definitely seems blurry. This one seems blurry as well. What I'd recommend is creating similar icons to the ones down here, the pixel ones, so that you have consistent illustrations and iconography across the page. I do like the idea of highlighting the results of the project, and I think that is pretty unique, and so I think keeping that would be great. Actually, I have one last note. I would recommend against having these 
big like drop shadow things. I think right now it's the, an additional visual element to the pixel art and it feels very random and the pixel art is already a very strong concept whereas this is a different concept. So highly recommend removing these and kind of focusing all your attention on the pixel elements of the homepage and I think having more visual focus will go a long way. So overall, I think the case studies need the most work in editing. I think the content is good. So I read through the case study and what you're saying is good, but the way it's presented makes it pretty hard to follow. A lot of the images are really small. The type hierarchy is confusing. There isn't consistent spacing around different sections. And so I think going through and doing a polished pass specifically around visual hierarchy and presentation will actually go the longest way. An example of inconsistent visual hierarchy is on the top area of the page. Design evolution is the strongest element for text. However, I believe that the strongest element should be the title of the page, which is currently ICPSR. Instead of having the ICPSR logo, you could say the, you can use the same text that you had on the homepage where you said ICPSR, it's kind of a mouthful, ICPSR redesign. And I think doing that would go a long way because then the page feels more grounded in the header area instead of having the visual focus go down here. I'm also noticing that the headers kind of vary in size. So there's this like large header and then there's this kind of like less large header and it's a little bit confusing when you're using the large one versus the medium one. And so I'd recommend sticking with one of them. If you do want to use two variations, make sure it's really clear that these are like the big headings, because what I'm noticing is that these headings don't even match up with the process overview up here. And so I think making sure those little details line up will go a long way. Next, double check the spacing everywhere. Make sure you're using consistent spacing across sections. Right now, the spacing here is a little bit wonky because Currently, the heading has too much space after it. You want to make sure that the heading feels connected with the content that it is accompanying. And so definitely make sure to tighten up the spacing here. And then you can also adjust the spacing around the section so that's a little bit taller. One thing I'm noticing across the entire case study is that the way images are displayed is inconsistent and also hard to follow. So right now, there's these three images that are in a row. Down here, notice how these images are kind of slotted into where they can fit in the text area. There's this like diagram on the left side. Down here, there's an overlapping thing. And then down here, I can't even see what's going on. So highly recommend redesigning the layout of the case study so that the images can take up more space. I think the images are the most important part of the case study. And if I can't see what's going on without zooming in, it doesn't make my experience of reading the case study that easy. And so I think making the images front and center will go a long way. So for example, the images here are really easy to see because of the way it's laid out. And so maybe going with something that's more similar to this would help me follow the rest of your case study better. Additionally, I do have some nits that might help make the case study a little stronger visually. So these, for example, all have this really harsh drop shadow that is a little bit more distracting than helpful. The um, design doesn't have to pop from the page. If you really do want to keep the drop shadow, definitely try to make it lighter so it's less in your face. Another harsh drop shadow here. This one doesn't have a drop shadow. This has drop shadow. Honestly, the most important thing is consistency. Right now, I'm seeing so many different styles of shadows and non-shadows and strokes. So if you can make it consistent across your case study, that's the most important part. Here again, there's a really strong shadow. Another note about consistency. So notice how here the alignment is off. I'm assuming it's because of the two column layout or because of the image, but definitely make sure things like this are aligned. It'll make it a lot easier for someone to follow. And personally, as someone reviewing a portfolio, if I saw something like this, I would probably reject the portfolio because it showcases like lack of visual design detail. So definitely try to go through and make those little adjustments. Overall, great work so far. I really love the homepage and the little pixel illustrations. They're super great and add a lot of personality to your portfolio. My biggest feedback would be to go through the case studies and make sure that from a visual hierarchy perspective, they are easy to scan. I think right now the content is pretty solid, but the biggest problem is how the content is presented. And so focusing on the case study and presenting the content in a more easily to digest way will go a long way. If you're interested in an honest portfolio review from me, please leave a comment below. Hope you enjoy these videos and let me know what else you would like to see.